Thank you so much. Good evening. Um, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce the first Hall of Distinction inducting Mr. Kip Knight. Kip Knight earned his bachelor's degree in marketing from LSU in 1978, setting the foundation for a remarkable career that would unfold in the years to come. He fortified his knowledge and expertise by obtaining an MBA from the University of Cincinnati. Currently, he is an operating partner at Hongest, a $500 million venture capitalist fund based in the San Francisco Bay Area and a board member at NetBase Quick, a leading consumer analytic company. Kip's influence in the field of marketing knows no bounds. With a professional journey that has taken him to over 60 countries, he started his career at PNG in brand management and subsequently held Syrian executive positions at global giants such as PepsiCo, Yum Brands, and eBay. Notably, he also served as the chief marketing officer of Taco Bell and as president of HNR Block. But Keith's contributions extend beyond corporate confines. He founded the U.S. Marketing Communication College, dedicated to teaching communication strategy to diplomats in the State Department. He is also the founder and CEO of CMO Coaches, a national coaching network that empowers marketing executives and helps them to scale to new heights. In addition to his outstanding career in marketing, he has authored two books, Crafting Persuasion, a leader's handbook to change minds and influence behavior. And the other one, Learn to Leap, how leaders turn risk into opportunities. These are not just titles, but invaluable guides to those navigating the complex world of leadership and marketing. Beyond his professional endeavors, he and his wife, Peggy Day, have shown their deep commitment to fostering academic excellence. They established the Night and Day Graduate Student Support Fund, a generous gift benefiting the Department of Marketing. Their philanthropic uh, gesture empowers marketing PhD students by alleviating financial barriers, enabling them to attend conferences, acquire vital research materials, access specialized software, and undertake fieldwork and data collection. Their gift not only elevates the quality of marketing research, but also opens doors to collaborate opportunities and enriches the overall academic experience. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join me congratulating Kip Knight. Kip, uh, please join us on the stage to accept this well-deserved recognition. Well, thanks, Mohammed. That was a wonderful introduction. Uh, what a wonderful honor it is to be here this evening and to be back here in my home state, Louisiana, and my uh, wonderful Louisiana State University. What I'd like to do is two things. I'd like to thank a few folks, and then I, I wanted to share a couple of brief lessons, especially for the younger folks in the crowd. So as far as thank yous go, my biggest thank you is to Dr. Alvin Burns, who many of you in this room know. Um, Alvin Burns changed my life. Um, I took his marketing research class. He pulled me aside after class one day and said, there's this program in Cincinnati. It was called a Burke Fellow. And um, you get to go to graduate school at night and you get to work you know, two years and you get your MBA. And I said, that sounds fantastic. Uh, I did it. And because I did that, I went to Cincinnati. I met my wonderful wife, Peggy Day. It's been night and day for 40 years now. And we had our two wonderful sons, Tom and Chris, who are here with us tonight. And they, thank you for being here, Tom Chris. Um, I also, I, I want to recognize um, Ron and Ruth um, at our table here. Ron's been a wonderful um, mentor to me in terms of helping out the marketing students there. So thank you, Ron. Thank you, buddy. And then I've got my wonderful cousin, Carrie Knight, and her husband, Danny. And um, Carrie, thanks for everything you've done for me. I really appreciate it over there. And then... Fun. I've got Pat Summers here. Pat was the chairman of the Lively Arts Committee and a member of the LSU Governing Board when I was president there. 
And Pat's been a lifelong friend. How many people in this room have had friends for over 50 years? Isn't that pretty cool? So thank you, Pat, for coming on. I also wanted to uh, thank uh, my fellow honorees for uh, sharing the stage tonight. Uh, Jacques and uh, Jonine, it's been a real pleasure to get to meet you, and congratulations. It's, uh, it, it's been a, a real honor to be associated with you guys. So round of applause for that. Okay, so as Kerry will tell you, our grandfather was the greatest storyteller in the world. He was an amazing storyteller. And I've always had him a bit of a, as a bit of a role model. And when you get to Procter & Gamble, they tell you things are always the magical number three. There's always three, th three reasons to do something. A memo should never be longer than three pages. And you should never tell more than three stories if you give a speech. And so I'm going to give you really quick three stories. And this is primarily for the young people in the room because I have learned a few things along the way that I hope might help you out. So here are the three stories. Story number one, I've had the honor and privilege of working around the world and I've worked in India a number of times. And one night I was with a gentleman who was 89 years old. His name is Dr. Wadwada. And I was with him to talk about starting H&R Block in India. And Dr. Wadwana had had an amazing business career, a number of successful businesses and such. And so as I was talking to him at dinner, I said, well, first of all, Dr. Wadwana, you look amazing for 89. And he goes, son, age is only a number. And I went, okay, well, I'll keep that in mind because as I get older, I'll just remember it's only a number. And then I said, how did you have the courage to go out and do all of these incredibly courageous things you've done? And he goes, son, there is an expression, India, in India, which I'm going to share with you tonight, that you should always remember. And it is simply, leap and the net will appear. And I thought, wow, that is such a cool thought. Leap and the net will appear. That might actually make a good title for a book one day. So that's where I learned to leap cheat. <laughs> and as you leave tonight, if you like, you get a free copy of Learn to Leap. I'll leave inside it for you if you like. Um, don't, don't sell it on eBay, but you can uh, take us home. It's got some fun stories on here, but the, the point of story number one is my entire career has been, you get to a crossroads, and it's like the Robert Cross poem about taking the road less traveled. I have always taken the road less traveled, and I would beg you, please take the road less traveled, because that makes for such a much more interesting life, a much more interesting career. And I've talked to enough people that I can pretty much tell you that the biggest regret most people have in their end of their life is not what they did, but what they did not do. So all you folk, young folks out there, take a chance, learn to leave, leave in the net will appear. Story number two. Failure is something that is shameful in most places, not so much in Silicon Valley, but there's a Japanese expression that I really love, and it's, Nara karobi ya oki. And translated, that means fall down seven times, get up eight. Now, I've been really fortunate in my career to have some fabulous successes. I have also had some spectacular wipeouts. I was fired as chief marketing officer at Taco Bell. Remember that chihuahua? That dog did not sell any tacos. And ultimately, I paid the price for that. But because I got fired at Taco Bell, that led me to go to work at eBay, where I learned a whole different set of skills. That led me to go to Silicon Valley and learn about VCs and such. So do not be afraid of failing. Remember what the Japanese say, fall down seven, get up eight. And the final story is, can I ask one quick? Can I grab a glass of water real quick? Final story is, I was at a seminar gathering 45 years ago, and it was for the LSU Student Union, where I was the outgoing head of the governing council and the president of the LSU Union. And I 
was with, was with a fellow by the name of Mr. Phillips, which I know Pat knows, and perhaps some of you in this room also knew. And I looked at Mr. Phillips, and I said, Mr. Phillips, I'm about to leave college and embark upon my business career. Please, could you give me some advice? And he thought about it for a minute, and he stared down, and he looked at me, and he goes, I'm going to give you one bit of advice, and this is the only advice I'm going to give you. Be ruthless. Like, wow, that's pretty epic. Be ruthless. And I have thought about that advice literally hundreds of times since I've had that meeting with Mr. Phillips. And I've learned through my career that if you are ruthless, you will have a certain degree of success. But you will also have a growing list of enemies. And I've also seen too many of those folks, even though they're successful in their career, they're miserable in their personal lives because of all of the compromises they've had to make in being ruthless. So in thinking about this opportunity to talk to you tonight, I thought, well, gee, I wonder if there's something that is the opposite of ruthless. And believe it or not, there is. There is a word in the dictionary called ruthful. And ruthful means to be full of empathy. And so I would Tell Mr. Phillips, may he rest in peace, that his advice was not good advice. My advice to you would be to be ruthful. Because as a leader, the more empathy you can show to the people that you care for, they will return that in so many different ways. I'm going to give you one quick example. When I was at eBay, there was a gentleman by the name of Maynard Webb. Maynard Webb was... I'm so poor growing up in Florida. <laughs> he worked as a janitor in the college to try to pay his way through. And he finally made it through college, and then he got into IBM, and then he got into Cisco, and then he became our head of IT for eBay. And he was one of the most incredible people I've ever had the pleasure of working with. He went on from there and made a boatload of money you know, as a VC, and, and I'm talking to Maynard, you know, many years later, and I said, so Maynard, I noticed you have this thing called the Bench Charity. What is that all about? And what Maynard said is, you know, Kip, I'm going to measure the success of my life. I'm envisioning, I'm up on a hill, and there is a sun that's setting, and all the people that have worked for me are lined up coming up to the top of that hill, but right before they get to the top of the hill, there's a side, you know, ways exit. And the measure of my success in life will be how many people come to the top of that hill and give me a hug. And that's what I care about more than anything else. How many people are going to give me a hug? And that's why my bench is called the Bench Charity, because I want to give back to as many people as I possibly can who have helped me along the way. So in closing, um, I want to share some lyrics of a, a gentleman named Michael Fronte. If you've not listened to any of Michael Fronte's songs, uh, I would highly recommend him. He's an incredible songwriter. Um, and so here's one of his songs. It's called Work Hard and Be Nice to People. So when it's dark, look on the bright side. And when it rains, wait on the sunshine. Everybody likes getting them good vibes because everybody's got a heart on the inside. We could take all the hard lessons, add a little loving, and turn them into blessings. Don't complicate it. Keep it simple. Just work hard and be nice to people. And so for all of you teachers out there and for all of you leaders out there in the business world, just work hard and be nice to people. And be like Dr. Alvin Burns, who changed my life. And I hope you guys can do the same thing with people that you work with. Thank you very much for the honor. I appreciate it.